In the name of our risen Lord, I bid you a good morning. I know the weather isn't too exciting, but I am so thankful that we are together in community and we can praise God with a generous heart. Amen. Amen. As you are able, let us stand as we open our, our worship today, singing God's praise, singing Holy Water. God, I'm on my knees again. God, I'm begging, please, again, I need you. Oh, I need you. Walking down these desert roads, water for my thirsty soul, I need you. Oh, I need you. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony to my ears, like holy water on my skin. A dead man walking, slave to sin. I want to know about being born again. I need you. Oh God, I need you. So take me to the river. Good morning, all. My name's Alan. I'll be your liturgist today. Let us join together in the call to worship. Come to worship this day. Bring with you all your joys and sorrows. Jesus will offer hope. Come to worship this day, believing in the power of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus will bring. Come to worship this day, feeling the presence of God. Jesus will teach us new ways to live. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. If you would like to share in the passing of God's peace, the peace of Christ with you. And also with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
are now dismissed if there's any left. Please utilize the prayer cards in your pew for prayer requests to be placed in the offering plate later in the service. For those worshiping online, please place your prayer request in the comments or direct message to church. I invite you now to join me in our breakthrough prayer. Jesus, blow afresh your spirit on your church and your people. Open our eyes to the adventures you have planned for us. Give us courage to explore new hopes, dreams, and possibilities. Amen. Please stand for today's scripture reading. So, there's going to be three scripture readings today. The first will be from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now you are the body of Christ and individual members of it. Then we go to Galatians chapter 6. So then, wherever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of and the last from 1 Peter, chapter 2. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, 
in order that you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. Please be seated. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate your leadership this morning. At this time, we'll take up our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. This is our opportunity to give back just a portion of those many blessings that our God has bestowed upon us. I, I know you guys are used to hearing this, but I, 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 I like it. Uh, hopefully you do too. But it is a reminder uh, that we have our green bookmarks for online giving. So if you're here in person, make sure you grab those green marks as uh, bookmarks and all the information you have. If you're already giving online, thank you for your generosity. You can place this bookmark in the offering plate as it goes by to signify your gift. For those that are worshiping with us online, same thing for you. Good morning. We're so glad you're here. Make sure you uh, sound off in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Our moderator is standing by uh, to greet you this morning. Uh, and again, online uh, worship, uh, online offering is available to you. Not only do we give of our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings, we give of our presence as well. So I do want to remind you to please, please, please fill out our registration um, air, uh, tablets there. Um, that allows us to not only get updated information for you, but it also allows us um, in the church office that, um, let's say you missed three times, it gives us an opportunity to reach out and say, hey, are you doing all right? We want to make sure th um, that we stay in connection and in community with you. So without further ado, let us give generously as our God has generously given to us.
May our gifts reveal your grace and mercy far and wide. May others learn of your faithful love through the power of your works and through the gifts we bring this day. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. All right, church, we're going to be singing a song, a hymn that many of you may not know. So uh, we're going to sing, We Are the Church, I believe. Cindy, if I've got it right, it's one, two, and four. One, two, and four are our verses today. And as we sing this, again, the, the melody may be familiar. You may not know the words, but I just pray that as we are talking about the church today, that this hymn will be powerful and the words we sing would be a reminder of our goal and our focus of being the church this day. So we are the church. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. many kinds of people with many kinds of faces all colors and all ages to from all times and places i am the church you are the church we are the church together all who follow jesus all around the world yes we're the church too And when the people gather, there's singing and there's praying, there's laughing and there's crying, sometimes all of it saying, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together, all who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Amen, church. You knew that one. Wow, what was I thinking? You all knew that one very well. It's been a while, though. So uh, uh, I, just, I just pray that that was moving to you. It was to me to hear us as a church singing that song and knowing that we are the church. Earlier, our choir sang this song, Be Still and Know. And again, uh, music has an incredible way of connecting with us and, and reminding us. And I think for many of us, this calling to be still, and we're in the sermon series searching for truth and to know are such powerful things, to truly know something, to truly be still. Many of us don't take that opportunity. We, we allow the dinging and, and, the, uh, and the buzzing of our phones and devices to keep us in a constant state of, of being on and ready to go. So this is my, uh, uh, my, uh, my plea with you each worship service is to be still and to know of God's presence. Of, uh, if you haven't felt it through the music, this is the opportunity right here, right or through the liturgy, right here and right now, to know that God is present with us, wanting to move and make a difference in your life. Before we go to our time of prayer, I do want to uh, acknowledge that uh, Mark Mishler, um, his mother has been battling um, sickness for quite some time, and they, uh, he did reach out this morning and let the church know that his mother did pass peacefully um, this morning, almost 96 years old. So we, we praise and give celebration for a life well lived, and we ask for God's prayer for the Mishler family as they mourn the loss Mark's, uh, of Ma Mark's mother. So let us now be still and know God, and, and let us go into a moment of silence and prayer.
God of all creation. You are the maker of heaven and earth. You heal the sick, you lead the blind to see, and you are ever so close to those like us, the brokenhearted. So we come praising your name and thanking you for your amazing works in our lives and for the gift of your church, not our church, your church. And God, we, 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 we uh, confess once again that we desperately need you to be Lord over our lives, yet we still turn away and busy ourselves with distractions upon distractions. God, we confess that we are so busy trying to shout above the noise of the day that we don't take the time to listen, to really listen and to know you. The voices of the prophet spoke to people long ago who were too busy and too anxious to hear. Their words streamed in the winds of time and have come to us. We need to pay attention to your message offered through them. God, you are our God, the God of all creation, the God of power and love whose mercy is offered to us in abundance. In Jesus' time, he proclaimed the good news through words and actions, reaching out to those who were troubled, alienated, cast aside, and the list go on of the others. He offered healing and hope to those, to those turned away. Help us to learn that you alone can heal us and fix those areas in our lives that are wounded and twisted. God, help us to understand that you alone can offer to us a new way of life through Jesus the Christ. Remind us again that as we have spoken the names of people and situations that concern us, praying for your healing touch, that the same touch is offered to us in Jesus' name. Lord, help us. Help us to put our trust wholly in you, now and forever. For we ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lean us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As our sermon opener reminds us, we are searching for truth as we continue the month of January into February for our six-week sermon series. And I'll be honest, this time for the sermon opener, I wasn't so uh, pulled, uh, pulled away from the words and the, and the important questions. I was more of my man like, man, I'm jealous that they got sunshine and we didn't, you know, I could use some sunshine. So we have some, asked some of these big questions, some of the biggest questions there is, uh, of w such as, is there a God? Then this question and the answer to what Christians believe and why are found in the scripture lived out in Jesus and summarized through what we're utilizing is the Apostles' Creed. So as a reminder, we've got our bookmarks. If you haven't taken one home yet, put it in a place where either 
um, uh, in your Bible, in your uh, place that you do prayer in the morning or in the evening or whatever it is your discipline. But we encourage you to take these home and utilize these. I know many of you grew up with this, which is awesome. But we encourage you to utilize this um, in ways. And that's how, and this is the tool we're utilizing as we're searching for truth and specifically what Christians believe. So we're going to get right into it. If you can, you can either grab the bookmark if that's helpful to you, or I will pull, uh, pull it on the slides for us as well. So let us read together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead, and I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So if we're getting to this idea of, what, of searching for truth and what Christians believe, this is what we believe. And today we're continuing with this idea of the Holy Catholic Church and the communion of saints. That is going to be our focus today as we journey through, as we're searching for truth. Now, we will define these terms while... while, uh, while <clears throat> while owning the fact that the church has got this wrong. The church has gotten this idea of church wrong. We, we hear this often, right? When people come by and they say, I love Jesus, I, I'm just not fond of Jesus' people. I love Jesus, but the church I could do without. The, the, the church is corrupt, the church is broken, and I don't want any part of it. And if I would be, uh, uh, you know, if I could do confession with you all today, I've said this before, that when I, was, uh, when I was younger, when I was doing the Apostles' Creed growing up at Newburgh United Methodist Church, and we said the Apostles' Creed every Sunday, it was part of the traditional service that we went to as a family. And when I heard that part, when I went back to the, um, the, the, com the Holy Catholic Church, I would skip the Catholic part. And I would just say, holy church, because I said, I ain't no Roman Catholic, right? It was an ignorance of understanding of what does it mean to be holy, what does it mean to be Catholic, and what does it mean to be the church, especially in this context, when the church is almost a dirty name. When we did uh, the longest night worship service, uh, we, 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 um, uh, we, we said, let's have it somewhere else. And we did it over at the mortuary. And the reason being is the statistics are showing that the majority of people feel more comfortable walking into a funeral home than they do a church. Which means we've got some things wrong. We've got some things to work on. So I hope this space, as we define the church, as we talk about the context of the church and what it means to us, and more specifically, what God wants it to mean, uh, what, what it is, uh, what, more specifically, how God created the church for us and God's people, that is going to be our focus for the day. So holy, that's that first word we're going to pull, uh, we're going to pull apart, holy um, it means to be set apart for God or belonging to God. So if the church just was right there, if we're the holy Catholic church, right? If we start with just holy, that we were set apart or belonging to God, and that's what the church was about, we would have never had this conundrum of confusion of what the church is to be and what the church looks like. It does not mean that you would not, uh, maybe, did anybody else grow up with this phrase, smoke, drink, chew, or hang out with those who did? Has anybody ever heard that phrase? No, good, me neither. I found it and thought I would use it. But um, smoke, drink, or chew, or hang out with those who did. Like, that's not what churches did not do, a list of just all the things you shouldn't do. The church is holy. Why? Because it belongs to God. And when we, when we make it about us, when we make it about the things that we want, we start twisting it and mangling it, and it doesn't be, uh, uh, go, uh, nurture into what God has built as the holy, Catholic, one-bodied church. The church is holy because it belongs to Jesus. 
And yes, us clergy get this wrong all the time because we make it about us. Why? Because you come here just to hear me, right? And we get it wrong because we, we, we think we have this cape on and we think we need to fix all the problems. And lay members, we get it, uh, lay members get it wrong as well that they think that, that their agenda, that their focus needs to be because there is no other way of seeing it. When we, but when we are holy and we're one body and we are the church, we come together, we disagree, we, we argue at times. But at the end of the day, we say, we're doing this. My fervor, my excitement, my anger, my frustration. Why do I do this? Because my love for Jesus. And if we've got that why figured out, oh, brothers and sisters in Christ, we're going to talk about that term as well, and over 90 times in the New Testament, brothers and sisters in Christ, we are going to make we're going to be world changers. We're not going to be Pittsburgh world changers. We're not going to be Tri-West changers. We're not going to be Brownsburg changers. We're going to be world changers when we understand whose we are and whose church this is. But it's tough because it's so easy to forget. It's, it's, it's confession, but it's also an understanding that we've got a lot to do. Catholic, again, does not mean the Roman Catholic Church. It means the universal Church, the church, uh, all followers of the way, Christians, that's what we're referring to. If someone says they follow Jesus, they are a part of the small C Catholic Church. Even on my hand, every time I write it, it's always the big C. I'm like, no, no, come on, hand, the little C, right? Um, John 17, Jesus prays before he's arrested three times for the people to become one. Be of one accord. Be of one mind. Get it together, right? Jesus was praying this on, on his, well, we can't say deathbed, but you know what I'm getting at, right? In the last days of his life, he was praying for this. Forgive them for not, they, they do not know what they do. Lord, let them be of one accord. Let them be of one of mine. Jesus has called us to love one another. The great commission, um, uh, uh, the, that calling to go and to share the good news, to be one body of the church, the holy Catholic church. That's our calling. That's what, when we're searching for and what we believe, that's it. That's what we're looking for. The church is where I want to spend most of my time together today because, let's be honest, we have some major work to do in the church. So let's go to some basics. Church. Church in Greek means this word, which I always get it wrong. I know it's small, so my apologies, but uh, my best pronunciation is Kyrian. Uh, again, that's a really bad pronunciation. I'm not very good with the, uh, these, so I appreciate your grace there. But it means belonging to God. So again, assembly, we're going to get to that uh, practical part of it. What is the church? It's a body of, of people coming together. But we can't forget that it is rooted in this, uh, in this word of belonging to God. Again, rooted back to that holy idea, belonging to God. Kirk or Kirch. In German, is a word that means that which belongs to God. What is the church? It is defined in the foundation that it belongs to God. I've said this like five times, right? I think I'm trying to make a point. If we keep going on, this is the word that most of us know, right? If I say, hey, what's that, what's that uh, uh, Bible word that you know to say for church? A lot of us will go to this one, right? We, we can say this one a little bit better. Anybody want to give it a go? Just say it out loud. Yeah, Ecclesiastes, right? So we know this one a little bit more. Ecclesia, right? Called out or an assembly. So we've also got this practical idea. It's not that we're just connected to God, but it's that we're assembled, that we are together, that we are at attention. Our minds are on, our hearts are open, and our spirits are moved. And I know we're not Pentecostal. We don't do this. We do this, right? I, I get that. I understand that, but there's still this movement of the spirit that we still call. And as we uh, call back from last week, listening to that voice, that mighty rushing wind that calls us to action. An assembly called out that belongs to Jesus. What an incredible thing. Oh, yeah, we're going to get it wrong. We're going to make mistakes. And man, that pastor, he talks a mile in a minute. But the reality of it, the situation is that we know that we want all that we do to belong to Jesus. And that's what we're about. Loving, connecting, and serving just like Jesus. We love to put, do the love, connect, and serve, but we need, we need to remember why. It's Jesus. That is what it means to be the church. What Peter said, and one of the first things we hear about the church in the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus has been talking to Peter. Jesus asked him, who do you say I am? If this sounds familiar, we covered this, right? We just went over this. Um, I, a passage we talked about a few weeks ago, Matthew 16, 18, building his church on the rock in which he names Peter, and of course, it's a it's a, a, a double, a doubling up because why? 
Peter means rock, right? Like th- this is, so you get it, right? You get that I'm the son of God. You know why I'm here and what I'm going to do. Blessed are you for you know why I'm here. We go to 1 Peter 2.10 and we read, Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is good news. We have a crisis of addictions. We have a crisis of mental health. We have a crisis of self-worth. But if we as the church get this right, and we understand God, yeah, that, that once we were not a people, once we were alone, once we felt like we were nothing, but now you are God's people. This makes a difference. This changes a life. This is the reason we do things like Night to Shine. This is why we do things like partner with community uh, uh, individuals. We do trunk or treats. Or we help out with the police. We help out with the fire department. We do all these items. Why? Because we were once nothing. We were not a people, but now we are God's people, and we can't help to, but to be, as we like to say in the church, the hands and feet of God. You see, we are Christ's followers, the unique people who follow God. We, go, we jump over to Galatians, another, another reading for today. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially, especially, we forget this part, especially for those of the family of faith. And I get it. As a pastor, I'm driving outreach. I'm guilty as charged. We need to be in the community. We need to be out there. But if we don't keep our house right, if we aren't foundationally understood and disciplined in our relationship with God, we don't have anything to give, brothers and sisters. We don't have anything to give. So, to, and especially for those of the family of faith. So when the Mishler family is hurting because of the loss of their mother, we need to be there. When someone goes through uh, surgery or difficulties, we are there. Why? Because especially for the family of faith. And I think I've, I've said that enough, but it's very important. Not only are we the people of God, but we are also the family and faith in the household of God. I referred to this earlier in the New Testament. Ninety times we are brothers and sisters. I love that language, and I, and I use it often because it goes back to the tradition and understanding that we are in the family of God. When Jesus used Father, Father, Father so much to refer to Yahweh or I am, the, the God of all creation, we, we get pulled into this intimacy and understanding that this is a God that moves in and through me. And then I am never alone. This makes a difference. Over and over and over we hear this. We are called to care for one another like family or better than family. Let's be honest, right? Sometimes we are actually closer to our friends and often we say this term. Have you guys ever heard this one? Uh, uh, it's on plaques and stuff. The friends are the family you choose, right? You know, I, I like that one, right? It, it resembles to me that friends matter. The people that we put into our connections make a difference in our lives. We are all in need of family and have a desperate need for community. And if you don't think so, if you think you can live an isolated life, you are lying to yourself. And the devil or that voice that we talked about last week is feeding you a lot of garbage. Things that will not bring you good news. Things that will not bring you life. One of the biggest lies I see these days is that we can live an isolated and alone uh, life. And I'm not just talking about social distancing, all right? I'm talking about emotionally, physically, and spiritually distancing ourselves from everything. That, to me, is torture. And if you didn't know, still to this day, a form of violence or war that we use is isolation to get people to talk, to uh, torture individuals. Um, and, and, and this is not what we were created for. We were created to be communal. As messed up as we are, as difficult as it is, as tired as we are, we were made to be the church. If we, the church, truly loved one another and supported one another, who would not be drawn to something such as beautiful as the church? Not a group of people fighting, not a group disaffiliating, not a group judging one another, but a group foundationally connected to Jesus in a way that people go, wow, how do I grab that font of the living water, which is another, langu- another term for Jesus. If we want to grow the church, 
be a blessing. And you guys have seen this, but I try to keep it in front of you. And we're going to do more with this for Lent. If you haven't heard already, we're doing listening for Lent. And we're going to be listening to the voice of God. We've got our devotionals. We'll have some other, um, I know some of us have read through the New Testament. There'll be opportunities for during the season of Lent to listen to the voice of God and to our community. But again, it begins with this blessed, what we're calling blessed strategy. Begin with prayer, listen to others, eat together, serve others, and share your story. This is how we as a church change the world. And it starts right here and right now. We talked about this last fall. Instead of being a great evangelist, be a great friend, be a great brother, be a great sister or a positive influence in a person's life. And in Galatians 6, 2, as we refer to often in our liturgy and in our worship, is to bear one another's burdens. The, avoid, the very important Greek word, um, uh, again, I'm not going to try. I, I really do uh, struggle with these words. But uh, koinonia, communion or sharing. That's the best version I'm going to get of it. Oof. All right, I practiced all week, and that, uh, that one I actually did. The first one I botched, that one, not too bad. All right, so it means communion or sharing. We all have a need for this, but we all do not know how to give this. Now, waiting for someone, but to be that one, loving, connecting, and serving. Yeah, that's the stuff that the pastor keeps repeating, but if we're to be the church, this is the stuff we need to be a part of. We can use different adjectives, right? A lot of churches have different vision statements, and that's okay, but this is one that we've resonated with, and we said we really do need to love one another and love our community, and connections is what we need about, and serving, man, that's what this stuff's all about. That's what Jesus taught us to do. We all have this need. Doing church together and bearing one another's burdens, this is what it's about. And yes, I keep going to night to shine, but we can go to so many examples in our lives and uh, in, in our outreach and things in which we can accomplish together. First Corinthians 12, 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. John Wesley would say it this way, do all the good you can by all the means you can and all the ways you can and all the places you can and all the times you can to all the people you can as long as you ever can. Man, do not, if you want to, if you want to help someone go to sleep instead of the, the lullabies, try that one, right? Um, but, um, but, but it's important, do all the good you can, right? That's how we abbreviate that. Do all the good you can and all the ways you can at all the times you can, right? That's another way of saying it. Let's do one more. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid, but people do not light a lamp and put it under the bushel basket. Rather, they put it on the lampstand and give it to uh, light to all in the house. This little light of mine, are we singing it in our head already, right? This is where this came from. Uh, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father and in heaven. So if you came to this worship service this morning thinking that the church is dead maybe you came to this church uh, this service thinking like i don't know why i'm coming because i'm not getting something uh, from this um, and again we're in a consumer uh, environment so to think that you need to come and receive something it makes sense right that's where our heads but i want us to leave this place of worship knowing that not number one that we had an experience that we were touched by god that the holy spirit worked in your heart and your soul and that when you leave this place you are a different person not because of my words not because of incredible uh, Joanna's incredible leadership and our musicians and everybody that got anything work. Not because our, our media people did a great job and, and there was no hiccups that distracted us from worship this day. They do an amazing job, by the way. It's not because of all that. But when we leave this place, we know what? You know what, God? You put something on my heart that wasn't there before. And I'm ready to be the church. I'm ready to be connected to you. And I'm ready to make a difference to all the world. I'm ready to be, and then again, if we go back to um, the Holy Catholic Church and the communion of saints, we're ready to be in that communion, and not sainthood, but to move towards to doing all the good we can in all the ways we can and all the places we can. And I want to leave you with this question. What does the church look like in here and now, and how is God calling you to move the church to God's mission. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, we thank you for this day and for all the opportunities to be your church, to be your people, and to be loved by you.
God, we know that we live in a broken and hurting world, so we call that we, we, we want to embed and, and be emboldened by that calling in our lives to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, to, to share the good news, to be present, to, to eat, uh, to share a meal with others, to listen and to be connected in our communities. God, we want this so desperately, but we also confess, like, Lord, this is hard stuff. Our lives are already so busy. Our minds are already so cluttered. So, God, we pray that you would help us to be still and know that you are our God, that you would work mightily in our lives so that we, we are the church. You are the church. We are the church together. That this is the calling on our lives all around the world to be your church. So, God, work mightily in our hearts once again. May we boldly pray that bold prayer, Lord, that you would take away all those obstacles in our lives so that we could draw closer to you. That is our prayer, to not be our church, but to be your church and to share the good news with a hurting world, we pray. Amen. All right, thanks for letting me get a little passionate. I, I, can, I care a little bit about that uh, topic, so thank you so much. All right, as we uh, continue our week, there's a lot going on. Um, as a proud dad, I'll just say... Uh, my Aiden's going to be a, a, a bona fide eagle at the end of the day today, so I am celebrating that. <laughs> a, a big thank you. We've got many people represented. Uh, Mr. Matthews, of course, uh, uh, helps chair and lead our, our group there, but Troop Throw 09, uh, we are indebted to you. Um, Aiden, you did incredible work. I'm so proud of you. Your dad's very proud of you. Um, so, uh, church, if you guys want to come by for some desserts and, and some uh, watching grown man cry, uh, you can come at 2 p.m. That's the service. Um, but uh, closer to 2.30 is really where the, where the sweets are going to come into play. But we've got plenty of food. And thank you for many of you who said, hey, we're going to help serve. So you all are awesome. Thank you for that. All right, Joe Skinner um, and our leadership team, specifically Joe, got together the AED. She got us a scholarship, so if you haven't seen that, the automatic defibrillator has been installed. And if you would like to be trained, specifically Julie and I, since we're in the office, and uh, uh, Julie Stanley as well, um, we're going to uh, be trained on this, so we know how to use it throughout the week. But if you would like to be another person that maybe uh, um, you're available, I know that's a hard time. I get it, right? Um, Tuesday at 11 a.m., but um, that's when the firefighter was able to come and do the training. If you'd like to come be a part of that, we wanted to open, do an open invitation for, uh, for you to, for that training to use specifically. Uh, it's very easy. It tells you how to do it. But if you like that, uh, just understanding of how it works, that will be the time. All right, Night to Shine, we've got a lot of updates. One of the really cool things, I'm going to let Amy shout it out, but what, what about our volunteers? What's going on with our volunteers, Amy? Do we need, we need a lot more, right? Is that what it is? Uh, you can shout out loud. You can speak up there. Whatever you want to do, Miss Amy. Two hundred and fifteen volunteers. Yep. All right, thank you so much.
For those worshiping online, a brief synopsis. I know we didn't have a mic on there for you, but we just want to let you know that we have a lot of celebration going on, that we have our, our volunteers fully uh, funded. We have incredible sponsors. Um, and then our team has been working countless hours to make this happen. So please continue praying for our Night to Shine that's taking place on February 9th from 6 to 9 p.m. And thank you to all the, the names that I can't get to today, the 200 plus people, right, that all of you that are, have, are behind the scenes making this work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, uh, we have another Dine to Donate opportunity for you. So this one is for our Vacation Bible School. It's taking place on February 19th, 2024, and we're going to Arnie's. And our leadership team said, that sounds like a good idea. So we're going to go and have our leadership team at Arnie's. Um, so you are more than welcome to join us, or you can be in the corner and say, no, don't call on me. That's okay, too. Whatever you choose to do, please make sure to go and support. Um, and a significant portion, 20%, is going to go back to our Vacation Bible School. So if you like to eat out maybe once a week or whatever your tradition is, I'm not shaming, I'm just saying whenever you would like to eat, go out. Maybe if this is a night that you can choose for that week, we really would appreciate it. But you do need this coupon, right? Uh, you do need this flyer. Yes, Joe's giving me a big yes. So make sure uh, we've got some out there. We can print off more. So if you need more, just let the church office know. We can email it to you as well. But make sure if you go and you say, well, it's just here. Uh, I'm sure some of us will have extra. Just if you see me, I'll give you more when I'm there. But you've got to make sure you have those. And I know they don't like it when you hand them out right when people go through the door. So we want to make sure that we have that there. All right, this will be kind of my last moment uh, for this uh, is confirmation. So in the bulletin, we have the names in there again. So this is my plea for our last Sunday. Please, please, please. Uh, be praying for our confirmand. That is the updated list. We went to Catholic Mass yesterday and we survived. It was good. It was, it was actually a lot of fun. The incense was a little tough for some of them, uh, but it was a very good experience. Uh, we got to uh, meet with the priest afterwards. So continue praying for them. Um, and then we get to go to an inner city church next week, which is going to be a lot of fun. Kathy, thank you for your leadership. Uh, again, Kelly, thank you as well. And we're going to have a great time for that. So please be praying for our confirmands as they meet every most Sundays as they continue to work towards confirming their faith in Jesus. So um, that is a lot. But again, thank you, church, for being the church. And let us uh, continue our excitement as we stand and sing our closing song.
Amen. What a blessing and commitment. And let that be our dedication that we will serve the Lord. Receive now this benediction. Jesus comes to us offering healing and hope, speaking and acting with authority. Listen to him. Go into this world confident in God's love and healing power. Go in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Go in peace.